The L report in Chessbase 18 is a real cool feature. Let me show you why. To launch it, we click on Prepare Against, which opens the play index of your big reference database, Mega25 here. And then we select Vichy Anand and click on Error Report. We limit ourselves on um, long games, which is pretty sensible with the error report because obviously the rate of tactical miscalculations is much higher in let's say, rapid games. And we have a look at the games from the last six years. Search death should be quick and dirty because we want to finish it in reasonable time in this video. And while this uh, error report is now generated for us by analyzing every game, in the last six years of Vichy, and looking at any every position, we look at something different for an introduction, something really interesting. Let me toggle to my browser here, where I have um, an error report generated previously from 450 average Grandmaster games rated around 2,500. And please have a look at this graph here. This linear graph, this is something which is something fundamental. It displays something fundamental about chess, a very obvious and trivial statement, but still it's quite nice that chess base 18 is able to prove this in a sound mathematical way with proper statistics. So this graph displays the complexity of positions, the sharpness of positions, starting from simple and calm positions on the left-hand side, going to complex and sharp position on the right-hand side, and displays the average blunder size in this type of positions. And you see that we have a relationship, quite clearly, the more complicated the position, the higher the blunder size. It's trivial, of course, you knew that, but it's nice to see it in this uh, clear statistic that we have this nearly linear relationship. At the end, it wobbles a bit, but um, this sample size is pretty small. If you have look at a couple of thousand games, it will be very solid. You can try it on your own in chess base 80. And uh, it's valid for nearly every player, nearly every sample of, of, uh, of games. Uh, and uh, with the exception of um, three types of games. First of all, obviously computer games, because computer play quite precisely also in sharp positions, it's their strengths. Uh, correspondence games, of course, it's equivalent. And the games of very few top grandmasters, really a chosen few, maybe a dozen of the top players, maybe a bit more, but not much more, not the top 100. Um, they also are able to calculate so precisely that they just get to the ground of also sharp and complex position. So their blunder size doesn't increase. Okay, let's go back to Anand after discovering this fundamental law of chess here with chess with 80. Let's see how the report generation is doing. Oh, it still takes a couple of minutes, but um, so let me explain some technical things, uh, what's happening here. First of all, we can see that uh, we have now reached year 2019. Uh, and we already got an ELO estimation for those games for Vichy. So this is pretty cool that you now can take any sample of games from anonymous unknown players, run it through error report and get an ELO estimation just from looking at the blunders. Obviously, the higher the blunders, the lower the ELO. And uh, well, the, the function that um, looks how these blunders uh, happen, looks at how these blunders happen, it's, uh, it's quite nice and it's pretty well correlated to ELO rating with a certainty, a statistic certainty of 70%, meaning at least 70% of all players are predicted rather precisely by this error report ELO estimation. Okay, still a few seconds to go. You can see that it takes around one second per game, which is really not much for analysis. And we achieve that by looking only for maybe 40, 50 seconds at every positions, at every position. This is obviously not very much, doesn't be, it's not a deep search. 
but still it gets the proper statistical result because most blunders are not happening at 25 ply search depth. They are more trivial, even from super grandmasters. Okay, so for which we have a blunder ego of 2870, around um, 100 ego points higher than his average ego in this period of time we look at. The reason being, I think, many two things. First of all, he really is a very good calculator, always was in his whole career. And uh, secondly, um, there are many calm games, which the first observation here already was also states. And calm games have a lower probability for blunders. So this, if you look at games of aggressive and complicated players, their blunder elo sometimes is lower than their real elo. Okay, the graph you have already seen for an average grandmaster sample. And now you see for Vichy, Anand, uh, uh, this very strange horizontal line, meaning that the more complex the position, there's no increase in average blunder size. And that's absolutely amazing, only visible with a few top players, because he's just able to calculate things through to the end and find the proper solution also in very, very deep and very sharp positions. Please note that there is a, um, a value for complexity given below this graph. And the average value for grandmasters around 2500 is uh, 91. And for Anand's games, we have an com average complexity in the last six years of 62, which is uh, quite on the calm side, also explaining his huge gap to his average ELO. Let's have a look at some more graphs here quickly. First of all, we have the distribution of the blunder size, magnitude distribution. And we see that uh, Anand uh, makes more small blunders than the green bars depicting the average grandmasters. Uh, but then this is compensating, but he already when we have a blunder size of 100 centipoints to 150, he is blundering less in this uh, size range than the average gems. So he makes errors, but um, only small ones. And um, those might be false positives because you have to um, understand that this really is a quick and dirty search. Nobody has the patience nowadays to wait for 20 minutes uh, to, to analyze so many games. So people need a quick result and this forces us to limit our engine searches to a couple of milliseconds per, per position. And um, so for the very strong players, sometimes the elevation deviates, incorrectly deviates. So the engine uh, sees a small error where there is none, just because the engine doesn't calculate deep enough. But this is not, uh, in the bigger picture, this is completely not interesting. You get the proper statistics and you get a nice, quick result. OK, next graph shows how many blunders or average blunders in different evaluations. For Arnold, it's the same picture everywhere. Not many, always less blunders than the average grandmaster. Some more in winning positions, maybe he's just simplifying things and uh, none at all in equal positions and some in losing positions, much less than the average grandmasters who you can see blunder a lot more in losing positions, green bar, than in winning positions. How does a blunder impact the result? For example, a blunder that stays winning, leftmost bars here, could be a blunder where the player deliberately simplifies and maybe worsens the evaluation, but stays on a simple and pragmatic winning path. So this is not very interesting usually. And um, on the other, on the rightmost side, you see blunders where in a bad position, a, play, a player um, blunders and then the position is lost. And again, this happens quite a lot in Grandmaster games. People are under pressure, psychologically weakened, but not with Vichy. And here we have no bars, no blue Vichy bars at all. It means he has no blunders uh, losing a one position in those 190 or so games he looked at. Final graph is the blunder context showing some 
phases or uh, characteristics of the game where errors happen. First of all, of course, opening, middle game, end game. Interestingly enough, uh, there are more blunders in end game. I think this is um, because in end game sometimes, uh, yeah, you can get a mating result uh, if you if you make a mistake. <laughs> Suddenly, uh, um, an equal rook ending can be can be clearly lost, and that's quite a big evaluation swing. Then, so one often sees this with players that the end game average blunder is, is higher than the middle game average blunder, or they might just be bad in end games. It's quite a difference usually between if you're under attack, under pressure, or you're attacking yourself. Not with Arnand, but for myself, for example, it's a clear difference. And finally, we can see how do we fare against stronger opponents, which is, of course, a tougher challenge for you, or against weaker opponents. And some people are quite good, uh, precise, they feel comfortable playing against weaker opponents. And uh, for Arnold, it's interesting, very interesting, he, well, he doesn't play many stronger opponents. I think there were only uh, two or three, or one or one in, during his career. And... Um, and of course, he plays a lot against weaker opponents, so this is a bit of bias in this statistics. Fine, this was my introduction to the error report. And my final remark is that the slope and the characteristics, the height of this line is, is, is very, very typical for players. And um, I think also that it's quite a good tool to see do you have correspondence games or do you have real over-the-board tournament games. You can distinguish it quite nicely and quite quickly with this tool. Thank you very much.